Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Esra Erdem. Uh, uh, I am the general chair of KR 2021, uh, and joining you from uh, Istanbul, Turkey. And uh, the, with the program chairs uh, Megan Bienvenu and Gerhard Lekemeyer, uh, who are joining us from Rome, uh, let us open uh, this conference KR 2021. Can we move to the next slide? And the next one, okay. So uh, we are actually a large team. Uh, so we are a team of 26, uh, as you see on this slide. Uh, so we have been working towards this conference um, together since February, 2020. And uh, of course, there are many other, uh, like, um, you know, colleagues and students who have been helping us with the organization that you don't see on this slide. So there are like around 10 students who help us with the virtual platform setup, registration platform setup, and also the setup in Rome. And uh, there are many uh, area chairs and program committee members. So there are many session chairs and uh, co-chairs. Uh, so there are like uh, award committee members and, uh, who, and the steering committee who uh, kind of guided us along the way. And uh, of course, uh, there, is, uh, there are many participants, uh, uh, you like who helped us with providing uh, some feedback via some surveys. So thank you all uh, uh, from the very beginning uh, for your contributions to this conference. So next slide. Uh, so we have started working towards uh, KR 2021. Uh, so in February, 2020. So we were expecting, uh, uh, we were hoping that we would hold a physical conference in Vietnam, Hanoi. And then, uh, you know, after a while, we have started discussing about the uh, options. And then uh, due to the uh, pandemics, then we have focused our efforts uh, between the two options, like hybrid mode and virtual mode. But then uh, in April uh, 2021, then we have decided to hold the conference as a fully virtual event due to uh, uncertainties. And we have announced publicly that KR 2021 will be held online in May 2021. So uh, next slide, please. So now we are here. Uh, so let me just give you some numbers provided to us by our local chairs, Kang, San, Long, and Giuseppe. So as of uh, October 30, so we have around 850 registrations. And uh, uh, of these uh, registrations, uh, like 325 of them are students and 205 of them are, you know, women participants. And these registrations came from 53 countries in five continents. So we have like uh, almost uh, like 50, 15 uh, more countries joined to us this year at KR 2021 compared to last year. And we see the increasing number of uh, registrations like on this bar chart. So the blue lines uh, show the number of registrations this year and this orange line show the number of registrations from last year. And here also we have some numbers uh, of registrations by continent and uh, countries, as you may uh, as you may see. And um, so now, uh, next slide. So now uh, to give some more information about the program, I pass it to Megan and Gerhard. Please proceed. Okay, thanks, Ezra. Uh, yeah, I'll say a few words now about some aspects of the program, and Gerhard will say a bit more about uh, the, the virtual uh, format uh, later on in the presentation. So as you may know, uh, the KR conference program actually started last Wednesday. So we had three days of workshops and tutorials, uh, a very interesting and diverse uh, set of workshops and tutorials that were selected by our, our chairs, uh, Marcus and Young May. 
Um, and for those of you who are not able to attend last week, I'd really invite you to take advantage of the recorded videos because there's a lot of really interesting stuff there. Another part of the program that has already begun is the doctoral consortium, which was handled this year by our chairs, Jens and Magdalena. Um, we see here the list of doctoral consortium students. So there's nine of them and we, they've each been assigned a mentor. There was a dedicated doctoral consortium event that was held on Friday. And the, the DC continues this week with uh, lightning talks and poster presentations by the students, which will take place tomorrow. And so I invite all of you to, to make sure to participate in that. Uh, another important part of the program uh, this week are our five uh, invited speakers, um, which represent both topics within KR and in uh, neighboring communities. Uh, so we'll have Martin Groa, who will speak uh, tomorrow on the logic of graph neural networks. Jochen Renz, who will speak on Friday about spatial and physical reasoning. Uh, Uli Sattler on Wednesday will deliver this year's uh, Great Moments in KR talk about description logics and OWL. Uh, Joshua Tenenbaum on Thursday will speak about reverse engineering human cognitive development. And this morning, directly following the opening session, we'll have Francesca Toni, uh, who will speak, be speaking about reasoning for explainable AI. So I think all of these uh, promise to be very, very interesting talks. So I'd invite you to attend them or, or to watch uh, the recordings. Uh, moving now to the contributed talks, um, we followed the same format as last year, meaning that in addition to the main conference track, uh, we also had some additional tracks and special sessions. So the applications and systems track was handled by Martin and Uli, uh, recently published research track uh, by Vladimir and Pierre, special session on KR and machine learning uh, by Vaishek and, and, and Luke, and a special session on KR and robotics by Alessandro and Mary Ann. And all of these sessions are really aimed at increasing or encouraging uh, different types of, of submissions to our conference to emphasize applications, as well as connections to, to neighboring areas, or also with the recently published research track to make sure that we get to see all of the interesting work related to KR uh, at this conference. So in terms of the types of submissions that were uh, possible this year, so for all of the, the tracks and special sessions, except for the recently published research track, which is a bit different, um, we welcomed paper submissions, which could either be uh, long, nine pages, or short, four pages. And there was a single program committee which was tasked with evaluating these paper submissions. Um, we'd like to give a big thanks to our 24 area chairs, 170 PC members, and 63 external reviewers for all of their efforts in, in reviewing and, and selecting uh, the papers for this year's conference. Um, so for this recently published research track, so there the deadlines were later and it, you know, the submission, submissions took the form of abstracts of research that had already been published. And in this case, um, the selection was done by a separate uh, PC. So we'll just flash up here quickly uh, the numbers for submissions and acceptance. Um, which is broken down according to the tracks and special sessions, as well as to whether the format long or short of, of the papers. So we see that overall we had 287 um, paper submissions this year. And then in it, additionally, we had 17 abstracts that were submitted to the RPR uh, track. So to get a better feeling for these numbers in comparison to recent years, um, so if we compare with the last five editions, in terms of paper submissions, where here I include both long and short papers when both of the options were available, uh, we can see that there was a very significant increase in, in, in submissions this, this year. Um, and in terms of the acceptance rate, which again applies to all paper submissions, including long and short when, when those options were available, um, we see that the acceptance rate for this year is quite similar to the historic average acceptance rate uh, of, of KR. Now, as we, as we said, um, this year we didn't have only the main track, but also these other uh, uh, additional tracks and special sessions. And so it's interesting um, to compare, um, you know, how the submissions broke down compared to last year. Um, so you can see here the numbers for in blue in 2020 and this year in red. Uh, and obviously most of the uh, submissions are in the main track. 
but we can see that you know we're we're still getting uh, a good number of submissions in the in these newer uh, tracks and special sessions, an increase across the board. The only exception being the recently published research track where we may expect that due to the fact that the conference was announced at this point to be fully uh, virtual and that there's no associated publication uh, attached to RPR uh, abstracts, this may have contributed. So we expect that this more, is more of an anomaly um, than a, a lack of interest in, in, in this option. Um, another you know, thing we can note compared to 2020 is that there is a, you know, a reasonable increase in the number of short paper submissions. So this seems to be an option that is, is, is gaining uh, interest in the community. So we'll now move to the uh, presenting the awards. So um, how this worked was that our program committee made nominations for the Ray Ryder Best Paper uh, Award and the Marco Cadoli Best Student Paper Award. Um, we gathered, uh, the, the PC chairs, we gathered the nominated papers, and then we put together an awards committee um, with the purpose of both having a diverse set of um, expertise in KR and also making sure that our awards committee did not have any conflicts of interest with any of the nominees. Um, so this year's awards committee uh, had uh, uh, Cheetah, Andreas, and Tommy, and I will be now passing it over to Andreas who will be presenting this year's uh, awards. So now to you, Andres. Muted as often. Um, hello, and uh, I will start with the Marco Cadoli Distinguished Student Paper Prize, um, where we have two runners up and one uh, prize. The first runner up is a paper by Timothy van Bremen, who is the PhD student, and Andrzej Kujelka, uh, lifted inference with three axioms. And that is a paper which provides a novel methodology for performing polynomial time weighted model counting for first order sentences with at most two variables and where one of its predicates is restricted to be a tree. Uh, that was the first uh, runner up. The second runner up is a paper by uh, Thomas Bolander Lasse Dissing, who is a PhD student, and Nikolai Hermann, who I think is also a PhD student, um, is called Dell-based epistemic planning for human-robot collaboration theory and implementation, and it provides a complete account of epistemic planning and reports on contributions to theory as well as, as well as on experiments, and as such is a perfect contribution to the KIA and robotics track. And now the Distinguished Student Paper Prize is for two PhD students, Dashin Lu and Hiu Kyu Hiu Feng, sorry for the pronunciation, on the progression of belief. It is about uh, planning by progressing a probabilistic sit situation calculus uh, knowledge base when there are noisy actions and it uses only the notion of only believing after an action. Uh, and it solves an open problem in an Ichkai 2017 paper by Belle and Lackemeyer. So these were the Marco Cadoli uh, student paper prizes. And uh, let's move to the Ray Writer Best Paper Award. Here we have uh, one runner up, which is a paper by Anneke Hager, Carsten Lutz, and Leif Sabelek and Frank Walter, how to approximate ontology mediated queries. Uh, the paper proposes several notions of approximation for ontology mediated queries that are based on the description logics ALC and ALCI. And uh, these approximations it reduce the data complexity from co NP complete uh, to P time. That was the runner up. And the best paper is a paper by Camille Bourgo, David Caral, Markus Trotsch, Sebastian Rudolf, and Michael Tommaso capturing homomorphism closed, decidable queries with existential rules. And uh, the paper considers existential rules as a popular ontology med mediated query language and for the chase as a generic computation approach for query answering. And uh, the contribution is that the paper shows that every decidable query that is closed under homomorphism can be expressed by an existential rule set for, for which the standard chase universally terminates. So uh, congratulations to all uh, four of them. Let's 
applause the uh, winners of the prizes. They can perhaps uh, switch their video on so that we can see them. Okay, thank you very much, Andreas. And uh, yeah, we really encourage you to attend all of the presentations by our, um, our award, uh, awarded papers. I'll now pass it over to yeah, Gerhard, we'll finish up. Okay. Welcome everybody. And also a warm welcome from my side. And I'm gonna talk about a bit of the logistics behind the conference again, and uh, the fun part, the social program. Um, so again, uh, like as was mentioned, we started thinking about having a real conference in Hanoi, but unfortunately it ended up being a virtual mode. And this is a lot of work and we really need to thank our virtual arrangement chairs, which is who are Stefan, Marco and Long. Uh, so they did a huge amount of work of making this happen. Uh, and so far it's been running very nicely, of course. Um, so and this, for the virtual mode, of course, it's very difficult to engage people and try and make them interact. So we tried our best to facilitate that. So for this, uh, for each paper here in the conference, we also have a poster and these posters will, will happen immediately after each session so that the people can have a chance to interact with the authors uh, right after the session. Uh, like last year, we're gonna have a Slack channel also, which you, which you all should subscribe to, of course, for discussions after each session, so you can actually ask questions via Slack, of course. There will be Zoom recordings of all the talks. They will be made available fairly soon after each uh, session on a separate web page, uh, so that the people who are registered for the conference, they can all uh, watch those videos later at their own choosing. Uh, and uh, well, there will be direct links to gather and Zoom and Slack on the program page. So it should be fairly easy for all of you to join sessions either from gather or directly uh, via Zoom. And if you have any questions, then please uh, send an email to the virtual arrangements as you see here, like on the slide at the bottom. Okay, that's that. Uh, there's one new thing here in this conference, uh, which uh, we adopted from this year's AMAS actually, which are, which are called the informal discussion sessions. So these are not really sort of part of the program, but uh, they were uh, done ad hoc and like sort of the last minute, we were asking people from the community uh, to make up topics of their choosing that they find interesting and that may attract uh, some people uh, to discuss things that will happen in these informal sessions. So we have Diego Calvanese, who will be there on Monday. On Tuesday, it's Gabriela and Tommy. Uh, and on Wednesday, Ernie Davis. And Thursday, mm, so, uh, we have some post and show. And as you'll see here, like on the slide, these are all very interesting topics. And we hope many of you uh, will join us for those. And these will happen in Gather. And uh, we also have a new program, which is the diversity and inclusion session. And we should thank uh, the chairs here, Magdalena, Vanina, and Marco, uh, who, who, put up, uh, who put together a very interesting program. There will be a session here during the conference on Wednesday, uh, like on diversity and inclusion. Uh, there will also be an interesting virtual uh, KR trivia uh, where you can talk to fellow KRs, ask them questions, uh, and uh, win cool prizes, as they say here. And uh, the link for that will be provided at the opening reception this evening. And finally, uh, with this diversity and inclusion session, they also have sort of prepared to uh, meet new colleagues uh, during coffee breaks. There are two coffee breaks on Tuesday and Wednesday which are there, you, you will be able to go into breakout sessions and meet new people and talk to them, hopefully. Okay. Um, 
Finally, the social the social events, uh, there will be an opening reception this evening. Hopefully all of you will join. It will be happening at six this evening and we all meet and gather. Uh, there will also be games like Mystery Avengers. So we have three time slots on Wednesday and Thursday. And for those of you who have signed up for those, uh, there are instructions that uh, will be sent out by email, but you should also already have been informed about these things, of course. And finally, there's a social dinner uh, on Thursday. And uh, well, dinner in quotes, of course, you have to make your own dinner, but they actually may be some recipes on the web with uh, Vietnamese food. And there will also be uh, Vietnamese musicians that will, will entertain us during that social dinner. So hopefully many of you will have a chance of joining us there as well. Uh, then we also have what's called the future of KR session, which was going to happen on Thursday. Uh, there was a survey that was done that many of you have taken play, uh, have mm, taken part in that, and the survey results will be presented during that session. And there will be an open discussion like on future editions of KR, questions like should we have it mostly physical, should we also sort of consider more virtual events? And, and so on, and this will be open to all, of course, and hopefully many will attend. Last but not least, of course, we need to thank our sponsors, without whom we couldn't finance uh, many of the things that are happening here. And uh, so, we have a, so we, we are very happy to have a fair number of um, sponsors, and uh, the ones on the top are our main sponsors, and for, I guess, the closing of this session, we're gonna actually see a video by CAI Labs, uh, which is gonna happen now. And after that video, I guess we'll, we'll, st we'll still have some time until the next session starts. So at 9.30, of course, there will be the first, the first invited talk. Okay, so we can start the video now. <laughs> 